Hello, I'm meteorologist Carrie Hazley and welcome to this edition of the Alaska Weather Show. Today is Tuesday, September 29th, 2020. There are multiple ways that you can get a hold of us if you are seeking weather information. The first, the Alaska Weather Information Line. Number there on your screen, 1-800-472-0391. Takes you to a menu system and then you can select the area that you want to forecast for from the menu. You can always find us on the web at weather.gov backslash Alaska or if you rep replace that word Alaska with the words Anchorage, Juno, or Fairbanks. It'll zoom the map on the home page in, makes it a little bit easier sometimes to find the place that you are looking for weather information for. And as always, you can email me at carrie.hazley at noaa.gov. Now, normally we kick off the show by showing you the watch warning and advisory map. And despite a very active weather pattern, there actually are no planned based watches, warnings, or advisories in effect at this time. We do, however, have a marine warning out that is certainly worth mentioning, a hurricane force wind warning around the uh, Kodiak Island area. It goes into effect tonight, lasts through the day on Wednesday, and so there we're looking for very strong winds in the marine areas across Kodiak Island. We'll talk a lot about that as we go through the show today. And then just generally a very active weather pattern, although not reaching warning criteria in most places. So a stormy week starting with an area of low pressure that is moving into the area today and that's going to be impacting our weather Wednesday, Thursday and on into the weekend, particularly for southern mainland Alaska. Kodiak Island's really going to take a direct hit with this very strong storm, but we're also going to be looking for very gusty winds through the Alaska range over the next couple of days and also looking for uh, very warm conditions in a lot of places with warm weather getting pushed up into the state of Alaska with the systems that are going to be headed our way. So Check us out on the web again for your latest forecasts, weather.gov backslash Anchorage will get you the southern part of the state, Fairbanks gets you everything north and west of the Alaska range, and then switch out the word Juneau to get the southeast Alaska forecast there. So as far as what's going on right now, taking a look at the satellite picture, we can see that area of low pressure pushing its way from the northern part of the Pacific in towards Alaska waters, starting with the satellite imagery this morning, moving its way into the afternoon. So why Spread cloud cover associated with that. The center of that low still well south of Kodiak, but it's a fast moving system that's going to work its way into the Alaska Peninsula over the uh, coming hours. And then from there, continue to spread widespread precipitation and cloud cover. Still clouds across most of mainland Alaska today and some fog up on the Arctic coast, clouds over the panhandle as well. Very fall like weather pattern that we're seeing on the satellite picture here. Now, as far as what that pattern looks like, here's the surface chart for today, where we see that low, a 968 millibar low, so a strong system. It's certainly a, a nothing outside of the realm of normal for this time of year. We do see active patterns as we get into the start of our fall with systems pushing up towards us from the south. So this pattern, no exception. The frontal boundary associated with that, again, south of Kodiak Island as we record this afternoon. Uh, but we will look for that to move over the uh, island as we go through the overnight hours. Trough of low pressure across part of mainland Alaska, some showery conditions likely along that, how they're just isolated in nature with some cloud cover and then some fog up on the Arctic coast. Now again, I said this is a very fast moving system. So the tonight forecast here shows the frontal system associated with this system pushing its way into coastal areas of mainland Alaska by tonight. And with that widespread uh, warm weather, uh, at least warmer than normal conditions across a good part of the state, we'll also see this warm front as we go through the overnight hours, start to push warm air over the southeast Alaska panhandle. And with that, they're looking for some places to see near record warm temperatures as we go through the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning. Same is true for a good portion of the interior with this system as so much warm air is getting pushed up with it. Now, over the highest terrain, we could see some scattered snow showers along the Alaska range and the Chugach and the Wrangles. But again, you're going to have to go up pretty high to get above 
I'm sorry, get above where that freezing level happens to be. Uh, shower activity wrapping around the backside of the low across the Bering and the Aleutians with fog lingering tonight along the Arctic coast. Fog also lingering to kick off Wednesday morning up along the Arctic coast and then widespread cloud cover across mainland Alaska. By Wednesday morning, we see that area of uh, low pressure shift closer to the Alaska Peninsula and still staying pretty strong, a bit weaker on Wednesday than it is today as it moves into our area. Frontal boundary pushing onshore and with that we'll see the winds really pick up as we get into the day on Wednesday across south central Alaska through turning an arm and then also through the Alaska range. Again, not reaching warning criteria. That's why there are no uh, high wind watches or advisories out right now. Uh, but we will want to watch these conditions closely as we are looking for winds through the Alaska range into the day tomorrow to gust between uh, 40 and 45 miles per hour, turning an arm up to about 55 miles per hour. So certainly a, a gusty wind system, although uh, not the strongest we've seen yet this year, with widespread rain again associated with that and then rain pushing into the panhandle for the day on Wednesday. Now that area of low pressure sticks around for Thursday, actually kind of splits into two distinct systems. One will move into Bristol Bay for our Thursday. The other does stay down in the North Pacific with a very gusty southeasterly flow across the Gulf of Alaska. So we're going to see our winds pick up on Thursday. We're going to see the waves stay pretty high on Thursday across the Gulf as the system really kind of stays in place. Now the main frontal boundary does push on shore over mainland Alaska by Thursday and then starts to weaken, but it is going to leave a wet and windy pattern behind it. Over the panhandle though after this front dissipates we will look for some clearing and a return to a warmer than normal and pretty nice conditions for the day on Thursday. Temperature wise now going through the overnight hours into tomorrow we do see some 20s on the map up over the Brooks Range where we're looking for Arctic Village to drop down tonight to 22 degrees. Same is going to be true for Anatovic Pass. And then the sites all along the Arctic Coast where they're stuck in fog are going to see a lot of temperature change, but they should get below freezing. Whereas the rest of mainland Alaska and the Panhandle should stay above freezing. I haven't had to bring my plants in now for over a week. I actually kind of like this. So Fairbanks are going to bottom out tonight at 39 degrees over at Galena 35 and then down towards the uh, Bethel area 38. Kodiak Island you'll bottom out at uh, 47 and then we'll look for temperatures to be in the mid uh, 40s up to around 50 over the Panhandle. Into the day tomorrow now we see uh, Fairbanks recover up to almost 60 degrees. They could eke out a 60 degree. Uh, temperature there, we look for the high to be about 58, and then we do see the uh, Arctic there get just above freezing, so Ukiagvik, you'll get up to about 35 for the day on Wednesday over towards Barter Island, 33. Down around the west coast, temperatures stay in the 40s there on the backside of that low, where we have flow primarily out of the north. Temperatures do stay a little bit cooler, so Bethel, 49, up towards Imanic, 46, and then Nome at 47 for the day on Wednesday. South central Alaska, temperatures in the mid 50s. 55 for uh, Talkeetna and uh, down around Kenai, 52 and very gusty winds again for uh, Kodiak Island for Wednesday over towards the Aleutians. Temperatures uh, in the 40s and 50s and then in the Panhandle we do see temperatures get above 60. Again we're dealing with near record temperatures for Wednesday over the Panhandle and also parts of the interior. Now for the day on Thursday, I'm sorry, for the early morning hours on Thursday when we had our low temperatures again, not quite going to be as cold Thursday. Thursday morning as Wednesday morning will be most places. So we do see Arctic Village and Anatovic, both of you guys getting down to about 29. So it's a bit warmer, but still below freezing for Thursday morning. And then down into the rest of the interior temperature is staying in the upper 30s to low 40s and then down across uh, south central Alaska temperatures for Thursday morning in the uh, mid to upper 40s 45 for Kenai 48 uh, for Kodiak Island and then out towards Ian Alaska Dutch Harbor we'll look for you guys to get into the 40s there 40s in the panhandle now for Wednesday we are going to see continued warm here's where we see some 60s on the map for the interior Fairbanks 61 for a forecast high that is near record with 50s across much of the state and 50s and even some 60s over the panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
welcome back. Now let's take a look at aviation weather conditions across the state. Starting off with a look at conditions for Wednesday morning, flying weather up along the Arctic coast, primarily going to be IFR as we kick off the day on Wednesday with widespread fog expected along the coastal areas, as well as inland along the coastal plain area there. Also going to be dealing with some IFR conditions Wednesday morning along the eastern part of the Kenai Peninsula, as well as parts of the Alaska Peninsula and then down towards Kodiak Island. Marginal VFR due to stratus out along most of the west West Coast and the Seward Peninsula to kick off your Wednesday morning. Also going to be dealing with marginal VFR conditions along a good portion of the southern part of mainland Alaska. A lot of that's going to deteriorate into Wednesday afternoon along the southern part of the state down to IFR as a frontal boundary associated with that very strong weather system we are dealing with lifts north. So widespread rain along the Gulf Coast is going to be triggering IFR conditions. We should see the fog on the Arctic coast lift north a bit so we'll see most of the IFR improve at least to marginal by the afternoon time frame, and then some IFR conditions expected out along the Alaska Peninsula and widespread marginal VFR conditions over the Bering Sea. Now for the day on Thursday, we see some weather conditions where we're going to see actually precipitation reach the Arctic coast. Uh, could see uh, some snow in some places up there, certainly snow over the terrain by the time we get into Thursday morning. So IFR conditions in a lot of places up along the Brooks Range and up along the Arctic coast. Across southern mainland Alaska, we'll still be dealing with marginal VFR and widespread rain conditions as that area of low pressure is going to stick around through the day on Thursday, we'll also see IFR conditions along parts of the Gulf Coast and then in a lot of places where we have higher terrain, the Alaska Peninsula, the terrain um, down around the Kilbuck Mountains and also uh, Kodiak Island and parts of the Alaska Peninsula. For the day on Thursday, some improvement. We will see IFR conditions uh, stick around up over the Arctic Coast in the Brooks Range with widespread uh, snow and snow showers up in that area. And then I will see some IFR conditions lingering around Kodiak Island and then stretching around to the eastern Kenai Peninsula and up along Along the Alaska range as well. As far as past conditions go for the day on Wednesday, we are going to look for Anatovic to be VFR through most of the day, although there could be some stratus lingering out on the northern plain, keeping them down at marginal VFR on the north end there seems going to be true for Adigan Pass. Now down to the Alaska range, Lake Clark will be marginal VFR tomorrow, Merrill will be IFR. And then for Rainy Pass, marginal VFR to start the day, we'll see them deteriorate as the front lifts north, go down to IFR. Over to Windy Windy Pass, uh, marginal VFR for Wednesday. Isabel going to be dealing with some deteriorating conditions there as well. VFR to start the day, deteriorating down to marginal VFR by the time we get into the afternoon time frame. Mentasta, though, you're going to be far enough east and also a bit lower there, so we will look for Mentasta to stay VFR for Wednesday. Over to Tanina, marginal VFR, deteriorating to IFR conditions for Wednesday as that front lifts north. Portage, you'll stay IFR all day tomorrow. Also, we're going to see some pretty gusty winds through Portage Pass tomorrow. And then finally down to the Panhandle, we'll start off with our passes all at VFR. So See those deteriorate as some precipitation moves in in the afternoon time frame down to marginal VFR. Now the freezing level chart is indicative of a very strong weather system pushing a lot of warm air into the southern part of the state. So we got a lot of spaghetti on the chart here. That's how I always think of these when I look at them. So down over the panhandle we look at freezing levels to be between about 10 and 12,000 feet and then for the western part of mainland Alaska ranging from about 2,000 feet around the Seward Peninsula down to 8,000 feet around the uh, Kenai Peninsula. Up over the Arctic, we'll see the uh, surface line dip below the Brooks Range to get into Wednesday morning. We'll see that lift north as we get into the day, however, with a secondary freezing level above that up around two to 4,000 feet. For icing on Wednesday, we are going to be looking for some considerable moderate around the Kenai Peninsula and then parts of the Alaska Range and the Aleutian Range with widespread isolated moderate through most of southern mainland Alaska. And on two winds, we do see multiple jets showing up on the map. We've got winds out of the northwest and a jet up to about 100 knots over the far western part of the Aleutians. And then another jet pushing its way from the southeast into mainland Alaska. That one there peeking out over uh, the Gulf of Alaska up to about 115 knots. Dropping down, we are going to be dealing with very strong winds at 9,000 feet up to about 80 knots just off the uh, Gulf of Alaska coast. And then over the south central area, about 75 knots at 9,000 feet. That's going to result in quite a bit in the 
the way of turbulence. We'll take a quick look in just a minute. Drop down to 3,000 feet there. Winds down to are up to about 70 knots just off the uh, the coast there in the Gulf. So for turbulence, we will look for some isolated severe lingering into the day tomorrow along the eastern Kenai Peninsula, and then a large area of considerable moderate. Hello. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth. I can see a lot of cool stuff from up here, and I take pictures of it with my spiffy camera that has 16 different settings. I have such good eyesight, I can see clouds, snow, smoke, smog, and ash. So I can warn you about dangerous conditions and help you avoid them. When storms are brewing, I watch them closely and help with hurricane, tornado, and flood warnings to help keep you safe and my lightning mapper tracks lightning strikes way up in the sky, even through dark, dense clouds. I also help with search and rescue missions. I listen for distress signals from emergency beacons and tell search and rescue teams just where to find people who need help. But even when I'm keeping a close eye on Earth, I'm monitoring weather out here in space too. I watch the sun for big bursts of energy, which send waves of radiation toward Earth that can affect power grids, block communication with planes, cause errors in GPS, and damage satellites. Space weather is also very dangerous for astronauts working outside the International Space Station. I warn them so they can get inside where they'll be safe. So the next time you watch a weather report or check your phone for the forecast, remember, that's me. So look to the sky and wave. I'll be here. Things are looking pretty bad down there. But don't worry, I'm going to give weather forecasters a heads up and help you stay safe. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite, and one of my jobs is to keep an eye on Earth's weather as I orbit above. But I'm 22,000 miles above Earth. How does your local weather forecaster know what I see all the way up here? First, I have to figure out what's going on. I point my special camera at the Earth and take pictures of the clouds I see below. My pictures show where the clouds are, but I also take lots of other notes about the clouds. For example, how high they reach into the atmosphere, how much rain they might cause, and when a severe storm may be forming. But I can't keep all of this information to myself. I have to share it with weather forecasters down on Earth. A big antenna is waiting for my call. Since I'm a satellite, I send my pictures and notes in a computer language of ones and zeros. Luckily, the antenna speaks my language. Computers connected to the antenna organize my notes and combine all of the pictures and cloud information and translate them into weather maps. They send a version of the maps back up to me. I'll hold on to these for later. Another copy of the maps is split into smaller pieces. This helps the maps move faster from one place to another. The map pieces are then sent for processing before being sent back up in the sky to a communication satellite. From there, the maps are picked up by antennas at the National Weather Service forecast offices in each region. There are more than 100 offices. I also take the maps that I received and send them out to companies that specialize in making the maps more colorful and better for viewing on TVs and computers. The colorful maps and the maps from the forecast offices then go to your local weather forecaster. The forecaster combines the information from these maps with lots of other information, like model forecast data and radar data, to make predictions about the upcoming weather in your area. 
And that's how I help you find out if bad weather is going to ruin your afternoon plans. You're welcome. Soon it will be my time to shine in outer space. I'm the GOES-R satellite. That stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. And the R stands for my order in this series of weather satellites. Like my older siblings before me, I'll do a lot for watching weather, but I'm pretty special because I have a lot of new gadgets. I'm originally from Colorado, but my journey to space has a few stops along the way. I'll be shipped in a very special satellite shipping container to Kennedy Space Center. Moving me around is not easy. I'm over 18 feet wide and weigh 6,000 pounds. And then things get really exciting. I get loaded onto an Atlas V541 launch vehicle. A big rocket! Woo! After Atlas and I blast off together, my compartment separates from the launch vehicle and I continue to climb higher and higher. Then I break away completely and unfurl my solar panel and antenna. <sighs> After that, I have to use my thrusters to get into just the right position, 22,000 miles above the ground and traveling 1.9 miles per second to keep up with Earth's rotation. And then I can officially start my job along with my fellow GOES sisters, where I take advanced pictures for more accurate weather forecasts map lightning in real time, and improve the monitoring of the sun's activity. It's going to be so awesome! I can't wait! And now, marine weather around Alaska. And welcome back now. Let's take a look at marine weather conditions across the state of Alaska, starting off with a look at the most recent sea ice product here from our Alaska Sea Ice Program. The Chukchi Sea remains ice-free. The Beaufort Sea still has considerable ice in it, greater than 80% concentration, highlighted on the map here in white. And all of this ice now is considered uh, old ice. That means it's all been out in the Arctic for at least a year, recently celebrated its ice birthday there in the middle part of September. September is usually when we see the uh, Arctic wide minimum for sea ice we have, uh, we believe, past that date. However, in Alaska waters, we do have um, uh, some rather warm conditions that are continuing to cause the uh, ice edge to actually retreat just a bit. So between now and uh, the day on Saturday, we're looking for the sea ice edge to retreat between 20 and 30 nautical miles. Now moving on to winds and waves, we do have a very active pattern across the Gulf of Alaska and then over towards the Alaska Peninsula that shows up here on the Southeast Alaska Wind and Wave Chart where we do see our winds and waves in excess of uh, 20 feet over the southern part of the Gulf. Same is going to be true in the northern part of the Gulf where we're up to about 17 feet and winds out of the Southeast up to about 35 knots. For the Panhandle itself, conditions are going to be much better. We do see some gusty winds tomorrow for Lynn Canal up to about 25 knots with seas ranging between three and five feet. Now into the day on Thursday, we're going to continue to deal with uh, very strong winds and waves over a lot of the Gulf of Alaska. We'll see most of the winds out of the southeast between 30 and 35 knots, and then seas in most places between 13 and 15 feet. Over towards south central, uh, again, strongest conditions are going to be over the Gulf itself, uh, where we see most of the winds for Wednesday between 35 and 40 knots and seas over 20 feet. Uh, and so we actually see uh, 21 feet just to the uh, southeast of the Kenai Peninsula. Peninsula. Take a look there at the uh, conditions in the southern part of Cook Inlet where we are going to see 
Very strong winds as the front approaches on Wednesday out of the northeast for a bit, up to about 50 knots, and then also seas exceeding the uh, the 20 foot mark there. Over the northern part of Cook Inlet, seas up to 13 feet, and then we'll look for uh, northerly winds up to 35 knots. Thankfully, improvement over the Cook Inlet area for Thursday, although we do see very strong winds persist, up to about 50 knots, but seas dropping back into the teens at least, and then for the northern part of uh, Cook Inlet, down to about five feet for our seas. Still keeping those seas in the 20s over the Gulf of Alaska. However, now for the day on Wednesday, getting closer to Kodiak Island, this is where we have uh, currently a, a hurricane force wind marine product out uh, that goes into effect tonight and goes through the day on Wednesday for the strongest winds and waves. Now we are going to look for our waves to be up around 19 feet. They're around Kodiak Island and then uh, seas in most, or I'm sorry, and then winds in most places around 35 knots. We will have a period though as the front passes where they will be considerably greater than that, hence that hurricane force wind warning. Over towards the Alaska Peninsula, winds ranging between 30 and 40 knots, uh, with seas up to around 17 feet on the Pacific side, 14 feet on the Bering side. Seas do drop as we get into the day on Thursday. Winds stay strong over the Gulf of Alaska, southeast up to about 45 knots. And then over towards the Alaska Peninsula, some variable uh, wind directions there. Uh, with seas up to about 8 feet on the Bering side, 14 feet on the Pacific side. Further out the Aleutian chain, conditions are better. We are dealing with some more benign conditions out that way. Variable wind direction, most of the seas in the single digits. Until you get over towards the Alaska area, there we get into a teens for our sea heights. And then improvement for Thursday, where winds primarily are going to be out of the west behind that area of low pressure, up to about 15 knots when you get in the far western part of the Aleutians for winds, 20 to 25 knots in the central part of the Aleutians. Further up the coast uh, for the day on Wednesday, winds out of the north, uh, 25 to 30 knots for uh, the, the winds there, and then seas in the northern part of the coastal areas here, up to about six feet, and then the further south you go, the higher those are going to be. Dropping off for the day on Thursday, however, with an offshore push, and then we see uh, winds up to about 25 knots in the marine areas. Up on the Arctic coast, winds out of the east for the day on Wednesday, 20 to 25 knots, and seas four to five feet. Really about the same story when you get a bit around or get around the uh, west coast there, where we see uh, three to four feet for most of our seas, and then again, an easterly component to the winds. Some increase for the wind speed for the day on Thursday, 30 to 30 35 knots over the Arctic that'll help to steer out some of the fog and precipitation does move into that area. For the day on Thursday, seas up to about 10 feet. Very active weather pattern across the state. Quick look at tonight's uh, pattern as we see a, a very strong area of low pressure continue to push its way towards the southern part of the state and as that frontal boundary shifts over Kodiak Island, we will see the winds really start to pick up through the overnight hours. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.